Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing my January 2020 favorites, the very first favorites for this year. How exciting. I felt like this past month was kind of, I don't know, like split in half. I feel like the second half of the month I was doing a much more natural, quick look. And I actually did a video based on it, kind of surrounding one of my favorite products, which I will talk about. Um, but the routine that I did today is basically <laughs> that routine. So I will definitely link to that video down below in my description box if you're interested in taking a look at that if you missed it for whatever reason. But let's start at the beginning of this month because I wanted to mention the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Foundation because I was going hard with this foundation. I still love it. This is definitely one of my favorites and that's why I'm even mentioning it in this video, but it definitely has like a medium coverage and it's for those days where I really feel like I want to apply like a full face of makeup and I want to look extra special polished. I will use this foundation. This foundation leaves my skin looking so uh, radiant without looking greasy. It looks so healthy. It really gives me that like lit from within glow. And I feel like that's very difficult to find in makeup products. So I have it in the shade 4.7. I did a whole uh, like full day wear test on this foundation. Um, I purchased this at the Tom Ford Boutique here in Las Vegas. And this was supposed to be uh, released exclusively to Nordstrom, like kind of in the middle of January. And the date got pushed back. I think a lot of the colors were uh, still waiting to be shipped or something like that. I have a friend over at Nordstrom and that's what he mentioned to me. So I believe the date for this foundation to appear in Nordstrom stores and online is around February 8th. So definitely keep an eye out for it around then if you are interested. The packaging on this is unbelievably luxe. It is incredibly heavy. It's a glass bottle. It has like a magnetic top, um, it's a pump, it's just, it's really, really luxe. I have it out on my vanity, it just looks really beautiful, and I absolutely love it. But the, the foundation itself is really just so gorgeous, and it has SPF 50, which is wonderful. I know that's not enough for the everyday. I know you should put down a nice layer of SPF first, and the foundation is a nice kind of addition. So the SPF 50 is definitely very, very welcome. And I definitely recommend going into store if you can, or getting samples if you can, of the different shades, because I generally wear like 2.0 buff in a lot of the Tom Ford foundations. Um, and this is 4.7 cool beige, and it works for me. I actually ordered the 2.0 buff from the Tom Ford site and when I got it, I didn't want to use it because you can't return opened, used, even just once, um, back to the Tom Ford site. So I was kind of looking at it just, you know, through the bottle, and I was kind of holding it up next to this one. It's a slight difference, but it definitely is lighter than this one, and I thought that this was a decent match. So I just returned that one, even though that's what I would normally think would be my color, since that's what I wear in all of the other uh, foundation lines from Tom Ford. So I can't remember how many shades are available, but there is a very, very broad shade range. So I think like the difference between each shade is very, very minimal. So there's probably a range that would work for you. But anyway, this has definitely been a favorite of mine. In terms of like the second half of my month and uh, the times when I want something really low maintenance and really, really fast and very, very natural looking, I've been reaching for this Dior uh, Forever Skin Correct and I have it in the shade 2N. This is what I have on my face today. This is the video that I did for, you know, fast, easy makeup look that I was talking about in the beginning of this video. Um, but this is just, it's just great. Like I just, I love it. I love how it looks like you really don't have like base on, but clearly you do all at the same time. That made no sense, but it's it's skin-like. The coverage is buildable. So I like to kind of keep it light, but I can kind of dot it onto some problem spots for a little additional coverage. And it works really, really well that way. I just, I love it. For something that has um, decent coverage and you're only using it in spot areas, it's, it's like a tricky thing to get right. And your Dior did it right because if you get something with decent coverage and you're only putting it in spots it's like very tricky to blend it out so that it's like blending perfectly into your skin generally you can see it where it starts and ends because of the level of coverage but this does such a good job with it this is the only thing I have on my face on top of some powder which I will talk about but it's it's like it's beautiful. Like I just put some around my eyes, around my jaw, around my nose, and then I kind of dot it around uh, where I have, you know, some sunspots. And it's just wonderful. I am so impressed with this product. And 
I haven't had like the best luck with uh, Dior like base products. None of them have ever like been the absolute best for me. They're usually okay. They're usually fine. But this one I am really, really pleased with. I've been using it nonstop and I can't tell you how quick it is to blend out. I just grabbed my BK Beauty 101 brush. You can grab any kind of brush. You could definitely grab one smaller than this because this is a pretty sizable brush, but I will like dab, dab, dab this all over where I feel like I need it. And then it's just a few swipes with this and it's blended in. It's like magic. I really, really love this product. And for me personally, I think the 2N is a very good match for my uh, skin. In terms of a concealer, I would probably go down to 1N. I'd want to kind of, you know, brighten my under eyes or whatever. But for those days when I really just am lazy, don't have time, don't care, this has been absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I love this product. I've been going hard with it. I've been wearing this pretty much every single day. Yep. Yeah, for the past like couple of weeks or week week or so ever since I got it basically so big big fan of that and then I just alluded to a powder that I've been using and this is like from the archives but again this is what I used and what I have been using for that fast and easy makeup look and this is that hourglass ambient lighting palette so this has dim light incandescent light whoops and radiant light and what I do is I just grab a big fluffy powder brush like this La Mer brush and I just run it across all of these and I just brush it over this Dior corrector. You know, I have very mixed feelings about these hourglass powders. I feel like if I use a base like this Tom Ford one, this almost looks like it's too much. It almost looks like there's just too much coverage. I feel like my makeup becomes a little obvious. It looks very makeup-y. It starts to look very thick on my skin and I really don't like that. I don't mind coverage, but I really don't like a makeup-y thick kind of like look on my skin. So when I'm using something really light and it barely has any kind of appearance of makeup on my skin, this has actually been like the perfect pairing with this because this has just a like a hint of coverage and it has just a hint of a sheen that it just adds like a little bit to this to kind of finish off like a flawless look. So I've been really, really enjoying um, these powders. And like I said, I've always kind of been on the fence about these and I really haven't used these ambient lighting powders from Hourglass in a very long time. But I'm glad I decided to pair it up with this because it's, it's really, Fantastic. Okay, in terms of bronzer, um, I feel like I talk about this every month, but I, I don't I don't know if I talked about this last month, but this was my favorite bronzer from 2019, and I just love it. I've taken it out again, and it's been living on my vanity, and I've been using it pretty much any time I want to use bronzer, but this is the Tom Ford um, Soleil Glow Bronzer in Terra. So this is the more neutral of the two shades. There's Gold Dust and there's Terra. Gold Dust is a little bit warmer. I just, I just love this bronzer. It's so creamy and it just kind of like melts into your skin. It almost has like a cream product kind of like look on your face. It just, it just melts. It just melts into your skin and I love it. And I do feel like I've talked about this product a lot. So I'm just, I'm gonna move on. But I love this bronzer and I've been using it pretty much nonstop this month. Okay, blush. This was a very, very, very big month for blush for me. I love blush. Um, I, I'm kind of a blush fiend. I'm just like a cheek product fiend. I love bronzer, blush, and highlight. Like that's, those are probably my favorite products. Anyway, this NARS Tempted Blush is so gorgeous. It's peachy, it has a gold sheen, and I don't have it on today because I've been using it nonstop. I'm like, Michelle, give it a break show some love to something else. And I wanted to put on like another favorite of mine. Anyway, so this is the Tempted Blush. This is one of the new colors from NARS. And again, I use this in my fast and easy makeup routine, but I love it for blush and I love it for eyeshadow. And that's just, it's what I did today. It's what I've been loving for that fast and easy makeup look. This is something I mentioned in that fast and easy makeup tutorial, but I know a lot of people use a bronzer. You know, they'll use a bronzer as eyeshadow. They'll use it as their crease color. That's never really worked for me. I don't know. I just feel like it looks very, very muddy on my lids. But once I started kind of experimenting with blush on my eyelids, I've kind of fallen in love with it. So I've been using the Tempted, again, like straight this whole past week. But today I used a different blush and a blush I did want to mention in my favorite so I thought I would use it, is the Jersey blush from Chanel. 
And this is a blush that I don't, it just took me a while to get, probably because it's just so nude. It's something that I felt like, oh, I probably have something like it in my collection. You know, I don't really, because it's nude, but it has like a, a shimmer to it. It has like a beautiful, like subtle, but obvious metallic sheen. And then there's just the slightest hint of warmth. And I feel like all the other blushes I have in my collection that I, you know, thought would be dupes for this are much peachier, are much warmer, or are much more nude than this. So this is just, oh, it's gorgeous. So it's what I have on my cheeks today, and it's also what I have on my eyelids. And it's the only thing I have on my eyelids. So not the most exciting eye look, but I feel like it makes me look polished. I feel like it's a great tie into my cheek and I've, I've just been loving it. So the NARS Tempted and the Chanel Jersey have been the two blushes that I've been doing this the most with this past month. All right, highlighters. So I decided to talk about this product with highlighters, even though it's probably more of a base product for me, but this NARS um, Tinted, Tinted Glow Booster, and I have it in the shade Medium Cmos. I'm thinking about getting the light shade because, you know, I actually really, really like this product. I was skeptical of it at first. I thought, I don't know, it was one of those products. I felt like as soon as I got it, uh, I'll probably be returning it. I don't know. It was like I wasn't even giving it a chance in my mind. But I really, really like it as a base product. It has a very, very subtle highlighty finish. Oh, I used it in a trying new makeup video. It's basically like just kind of a, a less frosty metallic version of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And you can see this medium is, it's a little bit warm for my skin tone. So I like using it as a base. I've been using it, you know, with the Tom Ford. The Tom Ford has enough radiance all by itself because this is so subtle and because it has just a little bit of warmth, sometimes I'll use this as a base underneath this product. And it just, I don't know, it just makes my skin just look really, really um, healthy and pearly and smooth. It makes it look really, really smooth. So that's how I've been using this product kind of as a base or mixing it in with the foundation. I have found if I try and kind of put it on top of foundation, use it as liquid highlighter, it's okay. It's a little subtle where it's almost like a why bother, but you can, like if you really, really are highlighter shy and you want something really subtle, um, then this could be the product for you. But I've really been liking it just kind of all over my face just to give it that extra, that extra zhuzh because I am so, so dry. Um, so that is the NARS uh, Tinted Glow Booster in medium. So in terms of highlighter, because I've been using such radiant bases or I've been brushing like the ambient lighting powder kind of all over my face and I've been using such glowy blushes like the NARS Tempted, I really have kind of like not been putting that much highlighter on. No highlighters really stand out to me from this past month. The only one I feel like I, I recall kind of grabbing for and reaching for the most, and it's what I have on today, is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Glow Powder. Because it's, it's, you know, it's there. It's obviously a highlighter, but it is kind of like on the more subtle side. It's not like too bold and it really, the, the like tone of it really matches my skin. So it's another product, much like the Tom Ford bronzer that I feel like it just kind of melts into my skin and it just, it meshes really well. So that's the highlighter I, I recall using the most this past month and that I have on. Okay, sorry. We're going to talk about one more highlighter because I kind of forgot about this, but it's been sitting on my vanity and I have been using it. And I just, I just skipped my mind. Anyway, the Nabla Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powder. I have it in the shade Amnesia. This was the only shade that looked like it would remotely work for me that was remaining on the Ulta site. But all the other shades, except for I think maybe one or two of the darker shades um, in this uh, formula are sold out and have been sold out for a really long time. But anyway, this is like one of those super blingy highlights. And I was definitely using this kind of, uh, you know, before I was getting into this like fast and easy makeup routine. This baked highlight is so, so pretty. It really looks glass-like. It is like really, really wet looking on the cheeks. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. And if you like a stronger highlight, I definitely recommend these. Really beautiful formula, really smooth. And for a baked product, fairly easy to pick up. It's not like I felt like I had to kind of dig into it too hard. A lot of big products, I feel like, you know, you gotta go in kind of hard with the brush. I didn't feel that way with this. And it's really stunning on the cheeks. So the Nabla Skin Glazing Powder and Amnesia, highly, highly recommend. 
Um, okay, let's move on to eyes. Like I said, I've been using my blush a lot for my eyes. But what I do wanna mention was the Noir Fumé Quad from Tom Ford. This is definitely my favorite quad from the five that were um, newly released from earlier this month. And it's the one that's the most smoky and most, uh, I don't, I don't want to say neutral. I guess it's pretty neutral. Uh, neutral in tone and also neutral in feel. Uh, but you can use like just these two shades for like an easy look um, and then start to incorporate these two for something a little bit smoky. I really, really like the looks that I've gotten when I use this. Whenever I use this quad, I always feel really, what's the word? I get just really kind of like sultry and kind of just like boss babe. It's something about the colors and the tones in here that just are so sophisticated and so chic. So really enjoying this uh, Noir Fumé from Tom Ford. And then what I wanted to mention is sometimes I'll, you know, I'll do this whole blush look and for the daytime, I'll just leave it there. But if I'm gonna go out or if I just wanna, you know, change it up, sometimes I'm bored just sitting here or, or procrastinating, um, I'll wanna add just like a one shade like here to my lids, just to like amp it up a little bit. And I've been reaching for my Artist Couture loose shades. Um, these are called the Diamond Lights Finisher. And I love these. I think I've gone out and purchased all of them, but I love this golden hour one. You know what, actually I can put some of this on. So it's like, it comes with a little sifter and I'm gonna go ahead and just dump a bit out there. And you don't need a lot. I literally have like some crumbles in there but it has such an interesting, like non-chunky feel and effect. So I just have some on my fingertip here and I'm going to just kind of press and then like smear and kind of pat it in. And I don't get any fallout, which is like crazy unheard of with these like loose glitter type products. Oh wait, I lied. There's like one piece right there. <laughs> So that's the golden hour. Isn't that so pretty? And it's so easy. It was like just adding this one little shade. I really feel like turned this look from day to night. Oh, I totally fat fingered this side. I have it like all down here. <laughs> Such an easy, quick way to just make your look a little bit more exciting. So I've been using um, any of these colors, just kind of whatever I feel like adding there. I also have this diamond bronze. It's just a little bit more coppery than the Golden Hour, this is the one I just put on. And I've also been using my Chantecaille Luminescent Eye Shades for the same thing, and I'll just use my finger. This one's Cheetah, and I've been liking this one to go with the um, blush colors that I've been using. A lot of the Luminescent Eye Shades that I have are a little bit deeper, like the ones that I really like are a little bit deeper, almost too deep for you know my blush, like the Rhino and the Elephant, those are like kind of like a deep taupey color. So those are not great, at least not for my taste and my style, but you know, those aren't great for like just kind of this inner portion of your lid um, accent, but the Cheetah one is great. And again, I just kind of like get some on my finger and this one is just really beautiful. It's a lot smoother looking than these um, Artist Couture glitters. All right, eyebrows and mascara. I don't really have much to report. Kind of been using the same things. So no big deal there. Lips. I got a lot of lips to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about are the Decorte lip oils. I love these. Absolutely love these. And this this is not sponsored, this is not an affiliate link or anything, but I do have a coupon code to the Decorte site that will get you 25% off. I will leave that down below in my description box because I can't actually remember it right now. I think it's just Michelle25, but I'll leave that down below in my description box. Um, but these Decorte lip oils are new. There's three colors. There's this white jasmine, there's like a pink, and then there's like a red, and all three are infused with like a different oil, like a rose oil, camellia oil. This one is infused with jasmine. This color is white jasmine, and this is the one that I've been using the most. I love it. And this is like a great kind of like conditioning product for your lips. It's not, it's tinted, so you can definitely wear it alone, and I feel like it looks very, very pretty. Um, but I wouldn't call this like a lip gloss or anything. They've named this a lip oil, but it's much thicker than an oil, and it really, really hugs the lips, and it, oh, it just feels so, so good. They've been great for conditioning my lips. My lips were 
really not doing so well after I had, I had that kind of bad cold at the beginning of the month and my lips were just so dry and so flaky and just looking real nasty. And I started to use this and my lips have been feeling a lot better. So that's the first lip product I wanted to share with you guys. The second one I think is in my purse. <laughs> It's definitely in my purse, um, but it's the Viseart Lip Shines. And the one color I've been using the most is the Beignet color, which is the one that's in my purse, but it's the one that's like a caramel brown color. There's four colors all together, um, but here are the three other colors. So we have Petal, uh, we have Fleur, which is this mauve shade, and then we have Cerise, which is this deep, dark cherry color. These are called the Lip shines and these are definitely like compared to the decorte for example these are definitely much more of like a lip gloss there's much more pigment not that they're extra special pigmented but there's much more pigment to these let me swatch these for you actually and the texture is similar to the lip oils they're just a little bit lighter so i've been loving the beignet it's like perfect for that kind of uh throw on like a little lip liner and then put a lip gloss on these have been Awesome. So I'll share with you which lip liners I've been using um, in just a bit. But here's swatches of these three. And if you watch my uh, most recent luxury haul and giveaway video, I do swatch all of them. So you'll see the beignet in there. But the beignet is just is probably the warmest color out of all four. Um, but they just have such a lovely texture. They're light. Um, they're not sticky. They feel wonderful on the lips, very, very moisturizing. And I feel like these shades and tones, like the four that they came out with, pretty much address almost every skin tone. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And the scent of these is an Italian prickly pear. At first I thought it was kind of like a bubble gum, but it's like, it's like a fruity bubble gum. Oh, they just smell so good. I love it. I am not a fan of that vanilla buttercream birthday cake sweet scent and so this has been such a nice change the other product and this is the product that i actually have on my lips today has actually surprised me i guess you could say i'm surprised at how much i like this product and how much i've actually been using it because i am not a lip palette fan so i'm talking about the westman atelier lip suede this is their newest product and it has four different lip colors in there. And uh, what I was doing was using like a lip brush. I was using the Scott Barnes 50, no, 60 brush. And I was applying it with that and I was being really careful with it. In my mind, like that was the only way I, I could apply it was with a lip brush. But I thought this is so compact. It's so travel friendly. It's so purse friendly. It has a little mirror, the whole thing. And I thought, you know, if I'm gonna use this product, I'll probably want to carry it around with me and I'm not gonna carry around a lip brush, no way. So I started using my finger. I started just kind of going in and using my finger and just kind of dabbing it on my lips, which is what I did today. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I thought it was gonna get a lot grimier looking. It really does it. I mean, some of the colors are kind of mixing in together like this one you can see on top there. Like I usually start with this kind of brick red color, the second one down from the top. I usually start there. And if I wanna make it more of like a bold red, I'll add some of this on top, maybe just like kind of to the center of my lips. If I want something, you know, brighter and more fun, I'll add this one. If I want something that's, you know, a little bit deeper, I'll add this color to it. And generally what I end up doing is just kind of mixing it all. So today I put down this uh, brick red color just all over, I just kind of dabbed it all over. Then I went into the darker color down here, the mauve color, and I just put that kind of like on the corners of my lips here and just kind of dragged it along the bottom and the edges of my lips. And then I used this bright color here just kind of like in the pouty part of my lips. Very subtle, you know, it's not like I have this like glorious ombre lip or whatever, but I'm just having a lot of fun, just kind of like playing around with the different colors in here. And the texture is really, really great and it's fairly long lasting. So I'm not sure if this is marketed as like a matte lip product, um, but it definitely, it's kind of like a demi matte. It's not flat matte, it doesn't look dry. It doesn't make my lips feel dry at all. In fact, it feels 
It feels so comfortable, it actually doesn't feel like I have anything on my lips, which is why when I was showing you the lip oil, I almost put the lip oil on because I forgot I had a lip product on. But I really enjoy this, and I feel like I end up with a very kind of like everyday red lip. I feel like red lip colors can be very, very intimidating. They can be too bright, too bold, but I feel like probably because you're just kind of dabbing it on really lightly, you just kind of have this like really pretty wash of a red color and I have been enjoying it. I'm, I'm really surprised because I'm not the biggest fan of lip palettes. I just feel like I would prefer to have it in a bullet, but maybe it's the selection of colors in here. Maybe it's the formula. I, I don't know. I just, I'm really, really loving this. I've been using this a lot. Okay, just two more lip products. It's been a really lip heavy month. Chanel came out with these Rouge Allure uh, Camellia lipsticks and the shade Camellia Blanc number 327 is one that I didn't think I was going to get. I thought it was going to end up looking really white on my lips, but it is fairly sheer. It's, it's such a Michelle color, um, but it gives your lips this beautiful kind of like highlighty sheen and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So it has like a really, really faint, like light scent. It's not something I would expect from Chanel. I would expect something, if anything, kind of like floral and a little overbearing, but it's very light and it almost smells like a fruity floral. It's, it's really, really nice. It feels really great on the lips. It's almost like an enhanced lip balm. I don't think the camera does this one justice. It really is, it's like in real life where it'll catch the light and you'll just see like, you know, like a little hint, a little pretty hint of something. So I have been loving this. Ah, and I almost forgot to mention the lip liners that I have been using. So the two lip liners that I've been really enjoying using with like these lip glosses or these very kind of lightly pigmented lip products um, is one, the Chanel Longwear Lip Liner in Nude Brun. So Chanel just recently kind of like redid their lip liner line where it's kind of newly reformulated and the color range is a little bit different. So I've been loving this Nude Brun. It is, you know, it's a nice nude. <laughs> It's a nice nude, sorry, can't think of any other word for that. It's a really nice nude. And the formula, uh, I think is improved. I really, really like it. I find the older formula to be a little bit more drying. So this one goes on really smoothly. It doesn't feel drying and it sets down and it stays put and it's, it's just great. It performs really, really well. And it doesn't set down too quickly. So it gives me the opportunity to kind of smudge it out, which is great, especially when you're using it with something much more sheer, like one of these uh, lip shines. Um, so that's the nude brun from uh, Chanel. And then I've also been loving my Sicily lip liner. I've talked about these a gazillion times, but I have been using the Chocolat color. This one is deeper and more brown than the nude brun. So if I just want some, you know, extra contouring or whatever, I will go in with this one. And I have to say the Chanel comes close to the magical formula of this lip liner. And I won't bore you with all the gruesome details of why I love this lip liner because I've talked about it endlessly. But this one is still, I find, a, a little bit better than the Chanel. It just lasts a little bit longer on my lips, at least. So these two are the lip liners I've been using, you know, on those nude days. And then the lip liner I've been using and the one that I have on today is the Dual Lip Pencil in Plum from Isom. So this is dual ended. <laughs> And the color that I have on is the lighter side, this kind of like rose side, and that is the shade here. So it, it's kind of similar to these two, but there's just a little bit more red in it. It's just a little bit brighter than these two. And so I have that kind of like down here and you know, it's smudged in with the lip suede, but I have it on today. So that's the shade that I have on. And then the other side is this beautiful deep plum color, which I have definitely used in the past with my darker uh, lipstick colors and just lovely. So these are the, I guess four, I almost said three, but four lip liners that I have been really going hard with this past month. Okay, I think that's it. I was gonna go on and on and on, but I'm like, you know what? This is a favorites. I'm gonna keep it tailored. These are the things that I really have been reaching for quite a bit this past month. Uh, let me know what some of your favorites are down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. You guys always suggest the best products for me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.